go live go live hello everyone how are we all doing what has happened to oh sorry Ugh. that makes more sense that's better what happened to you? Seriously, is my singing that bad now? You get you you just jump off the screen. It's just that's just not loud. That's just weird, right? So, hello everyone. Hello, and already I've got high CPU usage warnings. And this is literally running the basic stuff. Oh, happy days. How soon can the computer stuff get here? Right, hello everyone. How are we all doing? So. Hello, Calvin Gasberg, Juno191. Hello, Juno. I'm, you're back. Good to see you. Hello, Joyda Dawson, John Shea, George Newman. Michael Cooch. Um... I'm just going to see. I sent you a message on Patreon. Could you take a look before the French Fleet video? Uh, yeah. I will have a look at that. I can't. Uh, you are the IGN version of Admiral Henderson. You have to allow the Amatos to go ahead. Price you pay for a free hand elsewhere. Literally what the IGN version of Admiral Henderson actually did do. I've discussed this before. If you go through um, the Axis Admirals... Uh, I did do and I I did do the uh, talk about what, who is the officer who I considered the IGN equivalent of the of Admiral Henderson in terms of creating the fleet. He's a very very interesting character, and he pretty much did have to do that. What do you do not do differently from historically? The trouble is, when you have to let the when you let the Yamatas go through, they tie your hand everywhere else because there's only so much you can frigging do. You have only so much infrastructure, and if your infrastructure is all going to support them, you can't do anything else with it. It's shitty like that. Excuse the wrench. Hello, Dan Freeman. Hello, George Newman. I think I said that. Um, hello, Stafford. Raining here today, so I don't know how well the signal will hold up, but I hope it holds up well. I will give everyone a heads up now. At 8 o'clock UK time, there is a minute silence for Her Majesty the Queen. So at eight o'clock, I will go quiet for a minute, and I will do. I will just do this, and then minute quiet, and then we'll talk and carry on again. Hello, Dan Freeman. Hello. Ooh. <laughs> you whisper menacingly at your food to prepare it. Good lord. I see good morning. My ears is starting. Help, I'm being traumatized. I joined at the wrong time. <laughs> Hello. Back in the brew shack. Yes, back in the brew shack, just. Back in the brew shack, Jack. Hello, Alistair Shaw. Hello, me and Ibarra. Is it a slideshow for anyone else? It shouldn't be a slideshow. Hello, Anna Rapal. Hello, Nighthound Productions. Maybe I could delegate the singing to the fluffy research assistant. You really don't want to hear the fluffy research assistant singing. Hello, JMF. Nice to go, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Nick J. And Nick G. Hello. So, hello, everyone. And hello, Michael Patton. Can anyone ask a question or these for patrons? These are, no, it's all ask a question. A question. Um, if for those who are new and who are joining, and hello, Tanifanaka as well. I remember. So the patron questions, the way I do patron questions, are slightly different to the way Thrak, my best friend, does patron questions. So what I do is there is patron topics are proposed, and then I select for those the ones I can do in the month. I, I have enough time to do the research on. Although I do keep back other ones which I think could be interesting for future topics, but I would need more than a month to do. 
And those go to a vote. The patrons then get to vote on what they do. And then they get a full presentation and full sort of, I, I, I know, a live and a usually recorded video on that topic. So, for example, we have coming up what would the what could have happened if the French fleet in 1940 had instead joined the Allies instead of go instead of trying to sort of do the Vichy French thing, um, and that's going to be a live on Thursday, and then it's going to be a recorded video coming out on Saturday. Now, that's how I do with pay, uh, That's how I deal with pay, uh, how I provide Patreon content. And then in the lives, when it's answer questions, everyone can answer a question. I will try and answer them in order. Usually I answer them in order I see them, which is sometimes not always the order they're risen in, because sometimes they get hidden amongst other ones, or people write a very long one which goes over multiple topics. So I go through the whole question from that one person, and then I go back to other people. So I hope that answers the question, and yeah. Let's hear it from everyone. Uh, speaking of questions, 96831. Would you agree, Doc, it's unfair for conspiracy theorists to blame the crew of the frigate HS Penelope for the crash of a passenger plane with 61 civilians aboard? For context, back on the 20th of March 1968, a Vickers video account with four crew and 57 panthers crashed into St. George's Channel near Works for Island, killing all aboard. Uh, there are many problems with Penelope actually shooting anything down. Uh, she didn't have Sam, and she was 150 miles away from the Viscount crashed. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there are always people who will come up with conspiracy theories, but sometimes you look at those and you go, you're really making the 4.5-inch gun, in this case, um, an amazing weapon system. <sighs> I actually have an original question today. Cool. Do you remember, Hannah, tomorrow will be an emotional day. It will be. It always is. But it will be an emotional day tomorrow. Um, I, 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 I have it on good authority. There is going to be a rather large number of US Marines who are on leave, apparently, in the crowd, who have apparently come over for it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I've heard from a couple of friends who are... How do I put this? When I say friends, former students who are now friends who have literally come over for the occasion. And it's quite a lot. There's quite a lot of people who come from around the world to be there. During the schedule the last two weeks, who interfered with my joining the streams? Yeah, the here, the schedule's back to your pattern. Hi, John Sykes. I'm here. Talk about Are you aware of the Izumo, um, Izumo of World of Warships? And w would you do a design similar to it? Let me see if I can find the Izumo World of Warships picture. If I can, I'll put it up. Of warships. Right then. Oh, da 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 da. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, the Izumo. It's always nice to have one. Let's see. Izumo. Basically, it's um, the Japanese build... Well, yeah, that is a Nelson. And a Nelson Rodney-style vessel. <sighs> With 18-inch guns, I presume. 450 Yeah. 18-inch guns. Well, that just... Let's let's put the image up so we can discuss this properly. Um, so we can discuss this properly. That's source. This is the joint. When someone asked me a question which I didn't have a thing prepared for, I didn't have to add the image file. Sometimes I have a heads up people from people with questions because they ask them on other things during the day. Nice six eight three one. Thank you for those uh, those heads up. Normally, I manage therefore thank, uh, thanks to that to have these things sort of squirrel away, so I know where they are. Right then. So this is the Azumo. Cute little thing, isn't she? I'll put her over there. 
Is it that bad? Well, ugh. look. Do I think the Japanese were likely to produce one? It would have been sensible. Honestly, it would have been sensible to go for an efficient design like this instead of the Amotos. Because if you had gone for an efficient design like this, you could have probably built it in using less of your industry and infrastructure. But life happens. Life happens, and well, will I do a design similar to it? As I've said before, I often look at the F class as my inspiration, my F threes, um, and I don't mind the triple turrets forward. I, there is advantages and disadvantages to it. I am not a big fan of the particular layout that Nelson, Rodney, and it seems the Azumo in disposition have where they have a it goes a super firing b c i would have c super firing especially in the nicest way this could have very easily been a free level system where all nine guns could have fired forward now medley does you if you put it in this format you do get a better range of coverage aft thanks to B turret in the way they've given it. But because they've got C quite far, so far forward anyway, it, you could have still achieved that with C. You could probably have, with very little effort, have brought B slightly forward on the super on the raised structure, moved A slightly forward in terms of its desi uh, design positioning, given them quite good arcs backwards, and it wouldn't, honestly, at the ranges you're dealing with an 18-inch gun, it wouldn't have really mattered much. You know, it's a, ni it's a nice thing to do a Japanese-style warship in, uh, as an all-forward design, but I... Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan on the Rage of Guns because of... <sighs> they really do have it sort of Caesar facing, isn't it? E mm. Yeah, no, sorry. I just... I don't like being in a position where you've got... If you're going to have... You might as well have the maximal forward firing capability you can build into a ship if you're going to have... If you're going to have bad R firing capability no matter what. So there is no good way to... When you've got all forward guns, you're never going to have perfect coverage to discern. That's fine. So you're going to be going for a forward attack profile. If you're going for a forward attack profile... You want to be as close to dead, the Ted on as possible. Now, that means you want as many of those guns able to fire forward as possible. And the moment you have that arrangement, you have an entire turret which can't really fire forward. Other than off at an angle. As for the US and the 57mm Bofors, just the second 76mm auto because the US company had a share in its former domestic and put a 57 on the Zomots, but the, uh, then they are replaced. The Zomots 57 30mm. So I am at a loss, but a step ahead of you. Hmm. Your yeah, uh, it, it's the it's the whole saga. The fifty-seven millimeter versus seventy-six. As I said, we were covering this in bilge pumps, and it was fun to go over. But I have a feeling our engineering colleague, when he returns next week, is going to be going. Uh, well, Tuesday is probably going to be going. Why do you discuss this without me? I need. I have so much I need to add. Okay. Hi, RG. And a report on the pre 1930s iron capital ships. Which ship was the best shape in 1945? Uh, of the pre 1930s iron. 
Uh, say the RM wants to retain one or two more if you wish. Which ones would they be? Oh, it's got to be Nelson or Rodney. If you're going to retain anything, it's going to be those two. All the pre 1930 ships. I would love to say Renown. We all know I would love to say Renown. We all know how much I love Renown. But it's got to be Nelson and Rodney. Nelson easier than Rodney. Rodney had been whooshed. How would the British talk the USA into apologizing for U2 spy flights and get the leader of USSR to back off threatening to meet Pakistan? For that, you're going to need me contact, give me context. But normally, it's going to be a lot of diplomacy. And finding something... Let's put it this way. Finding something the Americans want enough that they're prepared to... Uh, uh, they're prepared, uh, prepared to apologize for the US spy flights. Uh, the U-2 spy flights, and find something the Soviet Union wants enough that, frankly, threatening to nuke Pakistan will be is far less interesting to them. That's usually the trick of diplomacy. Finding something which is far more interesting to your to the other side than what you don't want them to do. And then making sure they can only do it as long as they don't do what you want them to not do. Hi, Darius Hello, Brock Payne. Dose Rossi, 4.5 inch anti aircraft railgun on Aatrus panel. I don't know if you confirmed. I... <laughs> they wish. They wish. Remember, so, Dr. Clark, think about the Alexander the Great and the Gordian knot. A seemingly impossible problem solved by a straightforward low tech solution. Can you think of naval parallels? There's been a fair number of scenarios where it's been quite. Uh, there's been this massively high tech problem, and they've solved it with a very simple solution. Um, but going with the Gordian knot and Alexander Great solution, who that sort of style. Well. Again, if I was going to bring up anything, probably, especially with what I have currently behind me on the screen, um, I would go with airdrop torpedoes and attention cables. Because let's be honest, that's a fairly simple solution. Everyone else is trying to work out buoyancy and all sorts of complicated things. The British just go, let's attach a table cable to one end. Which end's the heavy end? The nose. Okay, that's where we attach the cable. Do we have books today? No, we just have questions today. Books are sitting in the bag there. There's a pile of them. But honestly, I have driven a hundred and something miles today. I have a weird shoulder because I appear to have managed to bash it, uh, bashed it. And... Yeah, I've unloaded two cars, sorted out dinner, with much my sister did take the lead in, but I helped out with some things, and you got everyone back in the house. No books today, just me answering questions. Sorry. I'm honestly not sure I'm going to be, I'm compass mentors enough to read. Although I have been reading some very good new books. But I can't really talk much about them because they're not out yet. But uh, Glenn Stewart's new book is out. And yeah, he's got some very good stuff coming. You're going to enjoy it. Including one which is going to make you all giddy. And probably is going to end up with me and Drac having to do some very steampunkish redesigns of some models or scratch builds. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up doing some scratch builds with a 3D printer. Actually, I want to do some scratch builds for a 3D printer for that for that book. I wonder if I can... It's going to sound strange. I have a very good friend at work. This is one of the uni universities I work at. One of the ones which is actually redesignating me academic support rather than academic. We'll leave that to one side. Um, 
And they run the 3D printers. And I think on when I think on a Wednesday I'm going to be in the same department as the for them and their 3D printers. So I might use my academic support stuff thing and try and get see if I can get them to print me up a model. I'll do the painting, but next one we can do some printing. So anyway, how would it hamper cavalry ship design into always? If any cavalry ship you built with main guns over range eight inch has to be over hundred thousand tons. Um, you'd have to build infrastructure first, and they probably would all be roughly a hundred thousand tons because honestly, no one's. I know there are these wonderful theoretical designs of these vessels which are over a hundred thousand tons, and yippee ki yay, that's wonderful. But honestly. For the Navy is building something of 100,000 tons, it's going to be a massive investment of infrastructure. A massive investment of infrastructure. And also, someone's going to need to seriously look at, work out what the overall tonnage is, allowance is. Hello, Brock Payne. Hello, stuff. Yeah, we do have three items today. We might even have four, because I think I saw Sean at one point. Hi, Tizzy. Actually, silly question. Did the US Navy... There's no such thing as a silly question, actually. Did the US Navy have an institutional preference for the cut and calibers in whole numbers? For example, we get a 12-inch, 14-inch, or 16-inch for cavalry ships, but never a 13.5-inch again. That's because the US Navy likes to jump up by 2 inches, and they like to exceed the British. So the British jumped from 12-inch to 13.5-inch. The Americans immediately went, hmm, we can do better, we're going to 14-inch. The British then jumped to 15-inch, so the Americans jumped to 16-inch. To do better. And actually that presents the British with a problem, because the 16-inch is actually a very clever thing for the Americans to jump to. Because the British, if they jump to 16.5-inch, that doesn't really sound that much of an improvement over a 16-inch gun. In fact, it sounds pretty much pathetic. So it basically means the only place the British can jump to is the 18-inch, because they like to go up an inch and a half. It just depends on how you like to adjust your infrastructure and make adjustments to things. And the Americans like to work in two-inch increase, increases. It's preference more than anything else. And getting Congress on side. Mm-hmm. RG. On the subject of space warships, how would you rate the idea of a 7km space carrier with multiple hangar decks and a large flight deck on top and all the point defences and maybe some anti summary warfare? Why would, an, uh, why would a space carrier be carrying anti summary warfare capabilities? Anti surface weapons? And all those point defenses, maybe some. Mm, yeah, I don't think you put the point defense and everything on the top. You spread it around. It's one of the interesting things I find about some spaceships. They all seem to be on. Like, I had this big problem with Destiny. If you've seen Stargate uh, Universe, Destiny has all her guns on the top and the bottom. And yes, they can row around and pivot and fire. But I was like, oh, for goodness sake, where's the point defense? And I know, I know, the backstory is it's built by the ancients. So, and if in doubt, the ancients are overconfident, over egotistical. They think themselves absolutely amazing and beyond belief. And frankly, yes, there is the problem. I just answered it itself. But still, how I would have built Destiny and how they built Destiny are two entirely different things. And that would be even with the condition that Destiny is being built as a ship of, in in of endurance and. Yeah, and for um, exploration. There's something. If I journalist called Asian Belfast the Barish of Life to Dite, literally did a spit, a spit to, and said, Cruiser, you fool, and light one on to boot. I'll see on some people. They just see guns and say Battleship. You, the, there is a reason why I'm not allowed to watch news at, anymore with my family. I'm not allowed to watch it, especially not when there's anything about navies. And we're all very glad that. Drakenafell is not near Belfast at this precise time, or someone's been calling that than that. I don't know. 
Would it make sense for a super Royal Navy that Admiralty flown Drydox would have a tonnage capacity up to 300,000 300, tons and about 1,200 feet long? I don't know if you are. I remember I have 80 to 90. Uh, why would we have 80 to 90 super floating dry docks? Um, uh, even a super RN, yes, you could have some tonnage capacity of some dry do floating dry docks. They probably wouldn't have a tonnage capacity of 300,000 tons. I doubt that. They might, depending on how big you have super super carriers, etc. If they are roughly 120,000 tons, you probably would have your dry docks be, if you're building them from scratch and you want to you want to build them to 150,000 tons so they could take the carrier plus a little bit extra just in case, but that's about it. I just honk. Yes, right. I just like a sea turret being so blocked by four turrets. Seems to me it need a lot of aiming the ship, not just the guns. Yep. Dr. Clark, his armor has only 9 to 4, oh, times 4 tens. So, 16 mil, uh, sixteen inch guns? Okay. The notes I read, I think, for, I thought said 450 millimeter, but I could have made it read them wrong. Thanks. I'm looking for an accurate plan view of the eight, of HMS Achilles. Well, the plan is online with decent resolution. Have the four inch guns wrong. Show twins. Should be singles. Um, you'll probably want to have either John Jordan's books or um, Norman Freeman might actually have one in there. And I think the 1937 version of the Naval Architects, uh, the Transactions of Naval Architects, has one in it. I think. So anyway, any idea? I found that a capital ship with an ABXY system, X turret fast lease, so... ABX is more, uh, is more sensible. Hmm, potentially. Depends on how you position it. Hi, Jack Ray. Thank you again. Not sure if I've sent you thank you, but thank you. Uh, nice hearing. After Powers, you two were shut down. The leader of saw, saw demanded an apology. Yeah, but they always demand apologies. Doesn't mean anyone actually gives them to them. Know, my my early question. I was on the impression Ronnie's engines were shot to the point that she was basically mobile by early 1925. Would that not be a get point against her ascension? Yeah, but there's nothing actually better, and you're going to need to replace their engines anyway. The thing is, you're going to have whatever you're repl retaining. You're going to have to replace the engines of. So it might as well be Ronnie and Nelson because they're at least the youngest tubs to have be replaced. They've got the most hull life left of any of the ships. Especially as they weren't going necessarily always as fast as the others were. Where is that? I'm reading a collection of the official Admiralty Road accounts of World War II naval battles. It's really weird reading about naval battles in World War II about 75 years before hindsight. It is always weird, but it is interesting as well because it shows you how they perceive things at the time and then that runs into how they design ships, which tends to make some things make more sense. Whereas our hindsight says that's a very stupid decision, their understanding of what happened at that time makes it look sensible. Sorry to hear that, George. Amelia Barrett, would you think the BF-1110 a good torpedo fighter bomber? It would require a lot of work. I think they did more work on the Stork as a torpedo bomber. And the BF-1010, I think they did look at it as a fighter bomber, but not a torpedo one. Dizzy, did Hermes really get hit with 40 plus bombs and has there been an expedition to wreck, to wreck to see how bad the damage was? Um, if you're talking about Hermes in World War II, potentially, but I think that does kind of overwhelm it. 
a little bit. I'm not quite sure if it's really 40 plus bombs. But there is definitely an argument that she was hit with a lot of bombs. I'm not sure if this is your area, but if the British Empire was still around and India was a dominion, okay, would they allow the Alang Breaking Art to operate how it does in ship disposal? More than likely. Why would they not? This is always the question I ask people when they go, would they do this? Would they do allow this? Why would they not? Is it making money? Yes. Does it cost them anything? No. Do they make money of it? Yes. Then they allow it. Also, Jackie Fisher, most consequential first sea lord. If not, who is? Hmm. Fisher is definitely a very consequential first sea lord. Definitely has an impact. But most... Ooh. It's between him and Vincent in my mind. Definitely between him and Vincent. I just wouldn't like to pick between him and Earl St. Vincent. Here's my answer to that question. Stick Earl St. Vincent and Jackie Fisher in the same room. Whoever comes out alive is the most consequential. Oh, it's like the goat. If Germany produced copies of the Emmons of Class under license. <laughs> under license? You, I, I, where's the infrastructure coming from the building? Sorry, sorry. It's not me laughing at you. It's laughing at the amount of times I see variations of this. Uh, what they like to name them? Well, Bismarck, Tirpitz. Those are names which Germans like for big cat battleships. Can to add on and uh, continue on from that. Ah. Uh, Honestly, German infrastructure was terrible when it came to maritime construction. They can, they just about max out building Bismarck and Tirpitz, and honestly, those stretch their yards almost past their capacity. Lance, I have a question for you about the 18th century cruisers. Mm, okay. 19th century of cruisers, that's the 1800s, yes. Sorry, just converting that to what it is. Uh, to... So I'd rem uh, get it right, because 18th century they're still called frigates. So that's what I have at that point. That's 1700s, isn't it? Yes. yes. Sorry. Brains engaging. Later in Cameron, how would they compare to World War II airship? Yeah, you could have destroyed a frigate or sloop, take them out on one of versus one. Um, frigates, sloops, probably not. Destroyer, well, they destroyer will have a decent spread of torpedoes, so probably yes. Um, frigate or sloops, they have depth charges, that might work, but they'd have to get very close to their guns. Admittedly, they have, they'd have far control of World War II ships, World War I ships, uh, the pre-World War I ship wouldn't. But yeah, I'd, I'd still prefer to be in a destroyer than any of the other options, just in case. The director is, what was the plan if pedestal fail, or even if just the Ohio was lost? Redo again from Gibraltar. Um, however, SGU didn't need another season. It did need another season. But, odd, uh, but in, don't take this the wrong way, but... I needed to be aboard that ship to fix it. It's like, in nicest way, here is the other thing. You're designing that ship, and she's beautiful, In uh, her weapon systems are brilliant in so many regards. And then you design a city ship, and you go, right then, we put all our faith in our... I know they call them drones, but let's be honest, they're guided munitions, they're torpedoes. But they call them drones. Alright, in their sort of torpedo drone -y things. 
And you just sit there and go, where's your guns? You produce these massively powerful guns for this ship. Why didn't you have them on this city ship as well? Because then you'd have layers of defences. And if you had layered defences, it would be far more powerful. Far more powerful. And where's your production yard for your satellite and the satellite defence systems? Because why isn't that an automated production facility aboard the city ship? Because surely that should be able to rebuild and repair them. And... Well, where is the production facility for puddle jumpers? Because that should surely be here as well. Because you've got a city ship, so it need, it, it's got the space. It's absolutely freaking colossal. Surely it should be able to produce its own puddle jumpers. You can actually have a combined production facility that can produce either, depending on what you needed. And you could just press a button and go, I would like this today. I would like that today. Hmm. Uh, sometimes this thing needs a secondary turret on the doors of the hull after the ventral one tucked nicely between the shuttle hatches. And also, why are they deck side not internal to the base? Yeah, and that, again, why is the hang hangers not internalized? They, they should be internal. There are the main guns on the bottom. The main one of the the main battery gun is on bottom. Yes, the secondaries are, are on the some to, are top and bottom. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. Oh, so look at sci-fi spaceship should not be designed by anyone who has not yet landed on the moon in KSP. I think sci-fi spaceship should. Be looked at by someone who's actually considered how a warship needs to fight in space. Rather than just going, looks good, does it? Don't take more Achilles. Also, it looks to me like the Achilles bridge is more like US uh, HMS Arafusa than the Avelina and Anders, or I'm missing something. Achilles does have a modified bridge, but. That's not unusual for these ships. That remember, they the Royal Navy is adapting and evolving as they're going. So often, the bigger a class is, the more likely it is to have changes. Ah, so the Knights of Zagreb. So I was thinking how big cruise ships were when thinking up lone relics. Well, I can see, but still, three hundred thousand tons. Maybe they're super tankers when they're empty. Matt Flurry, what was the best submarine design in World War II for the Royal Navy? Oh, well. I'm just going to say this now. I'm biased because the I'm currently trying to put together, I'm putting together a, U, a book on the U-Class. Um, so I'm biased. But... <sighs> the US and T's are all very, very, very good. And... Honestly, if the T's had been able to do what they were supposed to do, which was be ambush predators in the South China Sea, you would have seen them racking up kills like anything with their forward firing capabilities. But, yeah, I'm going to say U class because I love them. U and V's. And post World War II, it's the A's, which can't succeed from the U and V's. BCH, hello. What is your opinion on the ugliest ship to serve in the Royal Navy, and why do you find it so hideous in the eyes? I refuse to answer this question on grounds that previously answering a similar question about an aircraft has led to the cult of the Blackburn Blackburn. Sorry, I'm avoiding that one. Um, I've I, I flopped into one of, the, one of those before. I'm not flopping into it again. I say everyone, why would environmentalist groups prote uh, environmentalist group protest the sinking of HMS Sirius back in nineteen nineties? Because these ideas are always to an extent contentious. Yes, you're thinking it can form a reef, but it's also going to damage things when it goes down. So it's which do you wait is useful. Now we're fairly happy with how it turned out, but you're never a hundred percent certain it will turn out that way, and you could have sunk a ship and caused all sorts of damage for no gain. So, yeah. Ah, uh, sure. Sh uh, Jackie Fisher, angriest first sea lord. Again, 
Das St. Vincent. Ah, but what if Fisher, Fisher, Vincent and Fisher came out of that locked room in a cage match as friends? Then the world will now have a joint dictatorship that everyone would bow down to, because who would want to take on that combination? Um, Raji, what would have changed at Midway for B-17 Kamikaze's Hiryu with a full bomb load? Um, well, Midway, uh, Hiryu gets sunk, but depends. Is this before, after, or during uh, Midway? If it's before Midway happens, it might change the fact of Midway happening. Uh, if it is during, then they lose Hiryu, and, well, the ball, it depends how she launched her aircraft or not. Basically, it's a case of the Japanese lose a carrier. This is going to change things. What it is depends on the context. What it how what it changes depends on a lot of context. Mm -hmm. Jos, uh, jo Jos Funk, um, have that fight be refereed by Admiral King, then sell tickets for it. If the fight's refereed by Admiral King, there's even money that they turn on the referee and join the tag team together to beat him up. Because he says something silly. Like he could take them both. That's right. Why did the IGN use odd numbers for their Type C and even numbers for their Type D class escort ship? Uh, I think it was to make it easy to work out which was which from their number alone. It was supposed to enable commanders to rapidly decide where and how they're positioning ships from their reporting number alone. I think. That's right, yes, if they ever had three ZPMs, they may well have that facility, but they don't. Just sad. It doesn't sound. It is annoying. That's right, my laptop runs high CPU usage too. Yeah, this is the week where I make a lot of orders on uh, Amazon and make Jeff Bezos even richer. No, no, but Landis was supposed to be a city ship, essentially a non-combatant housing system. They're not. The city ships are supposed to be... Well, they are supposed to have some production facilities. If you look at how they're writing on them, they are massive. Um, heavily defended, but lightly armed. <sighs> Again, the the way that they are used, especially Atlantis itself, is used is pretty much like it's a capital ship. So you'd expect it to be heavily armed as well. That's the thing. Once you've got an entire city as your ship, it's sort of... How do I put it? There's a book series and a TV program and a movie about cities which are basically mobile guzzling fortresses which sweep around planes gobbling up other cities and anything else in their path. A city ship Something that big, that powerful, that spatial, is going to have to be heavily armed and armed because it's too big and too important not to be. And it's going to have to have production with all these in it. Especially for smaller items. And defense satellites and spatial and puddle jumpers are smaller items. Did a clock? Did any cruiser commanders treat them like destroyers? Have a look at the tactics which Harwood uses at the Battle of River Plate. Later on, you mentioned fixing the Russian Navy and fixing five knees. You said four major yards would have been needed. Where? Baltic, Oshot, and two in a Black Sea? One capital for it? No, um, one of Vladivostok, one in the Baltic, one in the Black Sea, and one in somewhere up north. And I know it's going to be difficult, but the reason you have them up north is you'd have it spread up so you have one for each ocean. 
And when I say yards, I don't mean one for capital ships and one for the... No, they'd have to be big yards, which could do everything. We're talking building basically shippograd, not tankograd, but shippograd and building four of them. So you could churn out destroyers, cruisers, battleships, everything from the same city. So don't think of it as a yard, as in a couple of slips. Think of it as a dozen to two dozen slips. Think of it as having similar levels of dry dock facilities, all the armor and armor production facilities, everything in there. You're not going to have one yard because basically you have a you have a naval city per fleet. So your northern fleet, your eastern fleet, your Baltic fleet, and your Black Sea fleet each have their own city. You can almost afford to build as long as you're using similar components, so that infrastructure and logistics are the same way, same engines, same guns. You can almost afford to build a custom fleet for every single organ for every single group. Well, that's the, uh, that's basically the scenario they're in. There isn't, Dr. Clark, we need a boat cult to balance the sea scales. We do not. Not that. Not what I'm thinking of as the ugliest ship the Royal Navy has ever built. Definitely don't need that. Hi, Sean Mac. I'm just realizing how difficult planning a carrier operation is. Oh, it's fun. Um... My coach, who would take a, a take on Fisher, Jervis? Well, Beresford would have a go. Now, now which Napoleonic Admiral to pair him up with? Um, ah, oh, who was Jervis's annoying one? There were a few who annoyed Jervis. Romney wouldn't have liked Beresford enough to be matched up with him. Uh, Bing is just being cruel to Bing. Hmm. Who do we match him up with? Eight minutes till the sil uh, till the minute silence. Um. Who would we match him up with? Hmm. There is someone. There is one. That gem. Let's see. Oh. That and that. Right. Iron brew refill. Oh. It would be annoying and match up with Nelson. No, I wouldn't be that cruel. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. Bum, 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 bum. First order of the RT. Well, Vish uh, Vincent's biggest person who has a grudge against him is Cochrane, who basically has a massive, massive grudge against him for most of his career because he thinks he held something up when really it was just following procedure. And frankly, honestly, Cochrane didn't matter that much to him. But leaving that to one side, Lord Cochrane is probably the... Uh, person you'd go for as Vish as Vincent's equivalent of Beresford, in that he would do whatever he could do to upset or diminish the uh, St. Vincent. That's good. Uh, Protests about singing of Cirrus would not have uh, also not a lot of people not understanding the cleaning the ship and process the ship was going through modern processing. Yep, definitely. Oh. 
Well, definitely they had no cloak. Um. Bangarone. Also, if they have the cross continental railway they would need for those yards, how does that railway change the fight back against Germany World War II? It really does change the logistics scenario for the Soviet Union. They have far better logistics. And to be honest, there comes a point if you've got enough of the railways able to come down that easily, then you do have to wonder why you're trying to do the Arctic convoys because you can bring the supplies in elsewhere and hook up and get the supplies in, especially from the Far East and bring them down that train. Because it's a single track is the problem. If it's a twin track, well, it's going to sound strange. Twin track with um, bonus sidings, uh, so you can get trains which have got problems out of the way, and you can do amazing things about keeping your things operational. Hey ho. Uh, Colin Cameron, if the U-class sector had been in the South China Sea, do you see it having an effect on Japanese ASW practice? Um, the Japanese had some very interesting anti-submarine warfare capabilities, but the trouble is they didn't have enough ships to put it in the practice, which is why they have the issues they do. So, yeah, they might try more, but I don't honestly think they would survive any better than they are against the Americans or just the Americans. So an Anglo-British submarine force out there is just going to speed things up, not change things. Sure. I imagine actually that Jackie Fisher, John Jervis, and Ernest King would probably absolutely get along because their confidence would allow them to argue the hell out of each other. But they would actually be forced to listen to each other. Yes, but also we would be forced to listen to them because those three together, on if they decide they're going to be friends, they become, I don't know, not the Rat Pack, but the Naval Pack. The whole idea of there being a space force, for example, which uses air force ranks, would just not wash with those three. All right, so okay, everyone. Why does Hood and Van? Uh, why do Hood and Vanguard seem to be victims of war meddling in their designs? And how would the RN bring Vanguard's weight down in our plan ninety fifty three fit? Um, they didn't. Honestly, the plan, the the bring our weight down nineteen fifties refit. There were all sorts of ideas muted, but I don't think any of them would actually work. Uh, I. I um, my dad had a good comment about that once when talking about it, which was if they managed to bring down her weight, then uh, which was by hopes and prayers, then he w had better spend more time, uh, less time in the gym, more time in the church. A little bit. I know, a little bit, you know. Mm hmm. But he did have a point. His also view was that it was completely nonsensical, the ideas to do that, because you didn't need to. You didn't necessarily you need, it, If you really wanted... Uh, I think he was actually thinking at some point... In, it, they could have, if in the 1960s they decided to fit gas turbines, etc., they might have been able to do something, but... Yeah. Hi, Ron Cash. RG. Um, Cameron Carting here in Midway. The event takes place after the desert attack, but before the SPDs, ruining the Japanese day and Kiryu being in that state. What would change? Possibly the Japanese would draw. Possibly the Japanese, therefore, get away with not losing much more. But um, honestly, not a lot. Once you're already in a battle like that, not a lot's going to change. Uh. Did the Royal Navy operate in the Baltic Sea during the World War II? Baltic, yes, I think some Royal Navy civil subs did get into that far, but it was never an easy journey to get there. Royal Router, how did the US Navy adapt to det uh, detect and intercept small kamikaze raids as opposed to mass airstrikes? That's what they call the Big Blue Blanket Doctrine, and that basically called to having a lot of fighters airborne at any point, at every point in all times. Side chain one? 
I'm not sure why, Emily. No. Uh, take care, Emily. No, sorry. Should be, uh, could be shipyard grad uh, for Baltic and Northern fleets if the Soviets hadn't blocked the White Sea Canal and made it too shallow in order to have it finished for the May facilities. Yeah. You would have to do a lot more for the White Sea Canal to actually make that useful. Um, what is the most dangerous ship the RM built? Well, the most dangerous boats are probably the V-Class. Most dangerous ship the RN have built. Hmm. Dangerous as in ability to kill an opponent, because probably you're going to go with Vanguard, because radar guided 15 inch guns are nasty things. And if that had ever ended up in a fight against the Svodov class, then the Svodov classes would have been going, ouch, for a very long time. I would count that the Earth uses Atlantis as a good couple of ships, and the would have treated differently as original role. This is supported by the fact none of the buildings are airtight. No, I think the Lanteans would have still used it the same role as the Earth used it, but the, remember, Lanteans, you have to remember, <coughs> are incredibly arrogant. Incredibly arrogant. Yes, they have a reason to be, but they are incredibly arrogant. And. Yeah, so I don't think so. So you know, the sort of character limit really puts a damper on long defense of the role of Lantine starships. The Lantines would ha did have other ships as well they used, etc. But you have to remember they had a lot more city ships than just that. I know, because the Stargate teams found them. Managed to use one to procure a load of drones. All right, so take a look. What American aircraft procured on lend lease to the FAA you like better than their own equipment? Uh, they like the Wildcat, the Hellcat, and the, they like pretty much every aircraft they managed to get. Winkle Brown was a really big fan of the cats. He liked the big cats, like I do. Hmm. Oh, it was thrown outside of the steam issue, a stream issue on, on, on my end. It's a bit weird it's coming up, but I, I don't know. I, I do worry sometimes because when this one flashes up, it's uh, got bad processing to those problems. All right, 8 o'clock, so minute silence.
Right then. Hmm. <sighs> Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day. I didn't put out a uh, 60 second video today because honestly, I didn't like any of the options I had. I recorded one on the Raw Yachts to answer a question on the Raw Yachts, but it'll probably go out on Wednesday now because. Eh, yeah, it didn't seem right. And the other ones I had, Sir Walter Raleigh, etc., didn't seem appropriate either. So it'll be Wednesday and Sunday. Next these second videos will come out. That's actually what? Space Force uses Air Force ranks? Now that's atrocious. Complete blasphemy. Space Force needs to be an Air Admiral. Yeah, that's what I mean. Alright, the Dutch Sun Clark, what's the sail on really big enough to sanction as a base for Iron Counter Strikes in the Pacific? Um, It could have been. It had the facilities there, but you needed to improve it and put a lot of money into it. One of the things that people often forget. Is that it's not just British ships and British focus, but British money in terms of infrastructure is put into fighting the European and Mediterranean theatres because that's what they're allocated under the rule under the sharing up of the alliances. So if they when they then start moving to the Far East, they have to build up infrastructure, they have to build up everything to support the movement of the fleet, and that takes time. So yes, yeah, Ceylon could do it, but Ceylon as it was couldn't. But it could have been made to do it. And especially just shows the lack of investment in the 1920s and 30s, because honestly, Ceylon and Singapore should have been invested in. Massively invested in. I can't stress us. Grimhan and Dock is past safe. Uh, yes, but the trouble is there's a little bit of a delay on this. I'm not sure what the delay is currently functioning on this going out. So when I get to the questions versus when they come, come in. Um, so, yeah. Plus, I did sort of lose track of time for about a minute. So I started... By my watch, I started my minute silence at 8.01. So I do apologise. And finished at roughly 8.08. .08. Well, I it started then thought, hang on, I better put on a timer. So that's why I fiddled my phone and put on a 60 second timer. Rory, the most dangerous ship the Royal Navy ever built from our commercial health standpoint was HMS Captain. You would think, but honestly, there have been worse ships. There have been. Look at some of the uh, some of the very interesting second rates, which went a uh, second and first rates, which went out in the age of sail, and literally went out first voyage and never came back. Ingenious Sam, why don't we hear more about Russian naval battles, commanders, and stuffs in World War II? Can you recommend any documentaries and book? Um, hmm. We hear a fair bit, but honestly, for good books, hmm. Good books. More Soviets. Oh. Norman Palmer's books is fairly good. Um, yeah, that one's no. That one's. If you're already an academic and you've got about a bazillion books already, you can go and check and cross like, reference it with so you can understand what they're saying. That's a decent book, but I'm like, no. Uh, do do do. Herman's book, no. Not unless, again, you have about a bazillion other books to cross reference. This is the trouble. There are a lot of good books which are academically written, which are fine. 
but they're fine for academics because academics can go and cross-reference some of our books and therefore they can produce something which is approaching approaching a coherent idea of what that book's actually trying to say. There really are books which require you to read other books in order to understand them. That really is a thing. I worry about it as a thing, but it is a thing. I need to get back to the gym more often. Um, that's more that's more army than naval. Jürgen Rohr's got a good book, not this one, but he's got good wood, wood about the Soviet Navy in World War Two. Um, that's one I would recommend. Um, my copy of that one's currently disappeared. <sighs> I heard the USA is trying to negotiate the British other arms embargo of Argentina to counter China. How do you rate the chances? Not very high. It's when a Dr. Clark has to do more than just broadcast the class, uh, broadcast the class that the computer acts up. They just, they, he may need a mini whiteboard and books until the new one arrives. No, it'll be fine. This one will be fine. The new one, besides, the new one will hopefully arrive over the next week or so and actually be built this year, uh, built this month. You'll see it slowly get assembled behind me. I'm going to clear, the cat this space is relatively clear. I'm going to move stuff out of the way and reorganize things and some things are going. Some things we decide I've kept just in case I want them for future and don't want them. So, deciding. Okay. That's good. Um... For starters, I wouldn't term Northern Ireland as that. Derp Squad. That's actually quite a political question to bring in. Um, it would affect from the point of view of Harlan Wolf and various other suppliers, which are based there, uh, which Britain would no longer draw from because of that. But it's kind of... Yeah, I wouldn't call it that. There are points in history where you could make that case, but these days, um, I wouldn't call it that. It's one of those interesting things that I'm not sure actually um, the vast majority now of the rest of Ireland is really keen on it, because there, it requires a lot of investment. Northern Ireland requires a lot. Of, I've got friends over there and family both sides of the border, which is why I'm very careful in how I phrase it, um, mainly because my family has a habit of going everywhere in the world and marrying people, and then staying and producing a lot of kids, that's what my family does. <laughs> uh, I, I was having this conversation with um, family down in Cornwall. The other day, basically, going, yeah, I'm in my mid 30s now. I haven't found anyone to settle down with. So, I'm not sure what that means to me. And they're going to just turn around. Well, you do realize so and so didn't marry till they were in their 40s and they had 12 kids, right? And I was going, well, yeah, but he did have the advantage of marrying a, like, someone who was 15 years his younger I, 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 and being <clears throat> a millionaire. Uh, that kind of helps with these things. But we'll leave that to one side. But no, um... Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not getting into that one. But, no, it's a case of it's complicated. And it'd be interesting, but I also wouldn't call it... See, the thing is, it's gonna sound terrible. But if you go back in the history and you go, when they did, Ireland went independent. Yes, those areas were a minority, but they didn't want to go independent. And if you'd forced them to go independent, then Ireland could have ended up having a civil war, which was the real fear, between those, that minority, and the rest of them. And that minority had a lot of guns. So, either way, you were going to end up in a fight, uh, end up with a war taking over place in Ireland, probably. And yeah, they made the wrong decision. Probably. But also, there doesn't seem to be a right decision there, in that scenario. I think myself... I'd have put it to a vote. Honestly, I'd have had the every county vote. I'd have said that's how we're going to do it. But you might have ended up with even more of a higgledy-piggledy mess than, you, than we do now, because... Most of people presume that all of that's that most of the Southern Ireland wanted to go that way as well and become Ireland, and there were sections of it which may or may not have actually. It it becomes complicated, and again, there might have been sections of Northern Ireland which actually would have preferred to have gone with Southern Ireland. So it could have been very interesting. It could have been very very interesting. Ah, the joys of history. Yeah, but also, the nicest way, the biggest mm, in Nor in Ireland was probably Cromwell. <sighs> Cromwell was interesting. Would it be fair to assume that the arm was never really going to be able to fully solve the Hood's overweight problem, even if she was modernised? More than likely. It was always going to be a compromise somewhere. Hi, Vision. Thank you, and enjoy work, though why you put toilet roll after it, I'm not sure, but thank you. Rankash, haha, the ultimate. Have to read a few books to understand it. Book for me is the rules of the game on Jutland. Basically, you had to understand the battle, the history, the ships involved before it made sense. Yeah, that is a good example of that kind of academic book. It's it, it, And then you get those authors to come to academic conference and they go, I don't know why my book has only sold like uh, 200 copies. And you go, because there's probably only about 200 people in the world who have the realistic book collections necessary including universities, to be able to sustain reading your book. I should know, I'm one of them. Hmm. It's like Scotland. It's complicated. Oh, yes, Scotland is incredibly complicated. <sighs> Honestly, there is one of the things I, I, I know a few people who actually vote for the SNP, and they go, oh, we vote for them because we don't want to vote for any of the Westminster parties because we don't like the Westminster parties. But we don't want independence. And I go, so what does that mean? I said, well, if there was an independence referendum, we'd vote to stay. But we're still going to vote to put the SNP in power because we don't want Labour or the Conservative, Labour or the Tories running the, running Scotland. 
I sit there and go, Do you tell the SNP this when they come knock on your door? No, they never come knock on our doors. Okay, so... Um, there are probably people who vote... Uh, there, are, I'm sure there are people on the other side of the coin who don't vote SNP because they don't like the SNP would actually would vote for independence. It's just, it's just fun. It's just, it's a fun scenario in Scotland. And don't get me started on the Engl on the England scenario. Very strange. Very, very interesting. Event, watching events in London. Will there be Gurkhas in the proceedings? I'm sure there'll be Gurkhas in the proceedings. The Queen loved the Gurkhas. Michael Cooch. Uh, Cromwell's interesting. What kind of first sea lord would he have made? Would he have been in the Fisher Jervis League? Yes. Cromwell would have been a very interesting first sea lord to have. I imagine the Royal Navy would have been very efficient very quickly. Abrazic, do you know how many copies you have sold? Um... I am not 100% sure. I have had my updated from pen and sword list. Let's see, how many books have I sold from... Let's look for royalty statement. <sighs> Let's see. Now, I don't get royalties that often. This is the, 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 one of the thing enjoys things I find with it. You don't send. You, you don't get much money. Trust me for the royalties. So. Um. How many copies of the book have I sold? Uh, oh, this is me requiring me to do maths. Please note, I do apologize now. I'm having to do maths. Um, I, I, ooh, that's 400, uh, that's about 700 onto 900, of, it's about 1600 copies of the books I think I sold, I think, roughly, about 1600 copies. And so yeah, that's about sixteen hundred copies. So yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> and don't ask me how much money I make because it's really not much. There is another reason why I honestly am considering doing, and I'm actually now working on the idea of at least one little book 
going to Kindle is because of the sheer, I want to see what the differential is in earning between Kindle and me self-published on Kindle and um, publishers. Hi, Frank Swallow. Can you give more info and opinion on the Aspera Convoy? Uh, I did promise when I was here I would. Do you mind if I break the promise? Mainly because I'm tired. I will do it. I, I will. What I will do is I will end up. I will do a little video on the Aspero class convoy. I will. Pro, I will do that. I will put a com, I will put some slides together and I do something on the Aspero class convoy. Aspero convoy. Okay. I, I apologize. I just. Yeah. My brain's not in the place at the moment today. In terms of sharing, what's the importance of sending the Queen Lizards to USA? Uh, it's good to remind the Americans that someone else has some big carriers and they're cool, but also it's important because we haven't set up our own carrier training facility yet. We need to. That's one of the things on the plan for FOSS to do, but we haven't yet got enough F-35s, haven't got enough yet jets in service to do that, so... Why don't you rate the USA's chances as high for getting the British to change their outdated security policy as Sun I calls it? Because we don't consider it outdated. The Americans might consider it outdated, but Britain don't. Britain looks at Argentina and doesn't trust Argentina as far as they can run them. And unless America's going to start paying, fun, paying the cost of making sure the Falklands can, will stay British, then sorry, America's going to have to deal with the fact that we don't want to supply Argentina with weapons. Also, for British governments politically to suddenly announce, that, especially a Conservative government, to announce that they were going to supply, that they were going to release that, uh, free that up, in that leaking the press in any way, shape, or form would guarantee negative news cycles for a month. They're not going to do that. That's the kind of level of points which actually see points drop off your leader, your percentage of vote. Um, that's good. Who would Cromwell have managed to upset as first sealer? Would it be short a list to say he who he wouldn't upset? That would upset. Well, he probably wouldn't have upset Switzerland. They didn't really have a navy at the time. He'd have been first sea lord. Um, I honestly can't see how he would upset Nepal either, on similar grounds. Bolivia actually did have a navies at various points and were part of. Spain at certain points, so yeah, he probably would have managed to upset Bolivia. Um, let's put it this way Switzerland and probably Finland, he wouldn't have upset either, as well, because actually getting the Navy through to Finland would have proved well, no, he'd have managed it somehow, wouldn't he? Yeah, Switzerland, Switzerland, he couldn't have got the Navy to Switzerland and Nepal. Thank you, John Sykes. You got the copy from the USNI. Hmm. Don't know. See, the only thing that unites the UK is a dislike for Westminster. The only thing that unites the UK is a dislike for politicians in general. But we realise we have to have them. They're a kind of a necessary annoyance. Coming up, do you mention the Coromel painting the Labour Foreign Secretary put up before their first meeting with the Irish Ambassador? Uh, we try not to, because that was a very silly idea. What video did you say you wanted to discuss the HRS Manchester in? Hmm. Hmm. Can't remember. Let's see. Uh, today, can't remember. Why does Italy's previous destroyer class, France Italy and Valley, have so many guns, both 5 inch and many 3 inch guns? Because the Italians do not understand, uh, the Italians have a very close affinity with the Texans in that they do not understand the concept of too few guns. I 
Right, Cash, do you need to, say, need to Spinal Tap style agent, Dr. Luck? Just say the word I'm leaning. No, but I am considering... Yeah, as I said, this is one of the reasons I, I'm now working with, hopefully doing something else with another publisher, and I'll, well, I'll publish again with Pen and Sword. I've got other books I would like to go through with them. But I'd also like to see what Kindle does, because there's part of me looking at it going, if Kindle works out and I can get some smaller books published through Kindle, and they can provide me with an income, they can then add things to this channel, etc. It's one of the things that I'm currently writing short books, and I'm just reminding myself how nice it is to churn out 45, 50,000 words, i.e. what I would call extended master's thesis size, and just enjoy it, and just write because I enjoy it. And I'm going, well, once I've got these ones finished, I might do some more, and those ones would go to Kindle. And I would literally do it. And I would do it, I, 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 as I said, I've been asking about Vellum, I've been asking about the other software available, and working through and looking at the different software types available and what I can do. Because Vellum only works on Macs, and frankly, I don't want to get a Mac, because if I get a Mac, then I've got family members who I would suddenly need to provide IT support for, because I couldn't claim my hint. I know speaking Mac. -y. I know speaking Mac. I know speaking Mac. So I cannot, I cannot support your computer. I know Speaking Mac. No, no, no. You have to go to other places. You cannot ask me for help. I don't know Speaking Mac. I can't do that if I have a Mac. Mm -hmm. So I need to find a way to survive. Perfectly without getting a Mac. Hmm. How likely is it that they named them like Chris Agana and they that they named like Chris or Agana and Sakama of well will be Montgomery frigates? Um, there are options for what the Japanese will name them, and I'm almost tempted to think Yamato and Mushashi might appear again, but we'll leave that to one side. Michael Coach, book sales. Is that just Dead Tree version, or does that include Kindle sales? It includes both. Ah, no. For physicists, that seven books is good. Seriously. I've got one physics colleague who is really proud because his, his book has sold three copies. And I looked at him and said, how many copies did your mum buy? At which point he told me that was cruel to a cruelty, but apparently two of them. So someone else did buy his book. And I kid you not. Before anyone thinks I'm being too cruel to him, he's a professor of physics. And he and I have an ongoing regular poker competition. So, yeah. We smack talk. Hard. And currently I'm winning, but not by enough that I can really smack talk about my poker game in comparison to him. So I have to concentrate on book sales. But seeing as both of us are not really supposed to go to um, casinos for various reasons, leave that to one side. Ah, uh, the cruelties of life. Just because I'm good at watching spotting people's tells and psyching them out. Right, does it? There are many times World War Two where a ship gets hit and badly damaged by just a single shell or two, but then it takes another fifteen ninety six. What's going on with these numbers? Basically, there you can put a ship out. How to put it? You can do mission critical damage with a with a with a lucky shell hit, but to actually sink a ship, you need to let in water and not just air, which means you need to compromise the overall structure, but also you need to compromise its ability to um, displace water. That takes a lot of damage. Thanks, Janov. Frank Spider, let's see. How do you design your Aegis sailship to be better designed to repel borders or at least allow the crew below to safely reach the main deck? Um, ooh. 
crew below to re safely reach the main deck. You'd probably want. Oh. It's going to sound strange, but probably what you need is the steps to um, the, the the steps they have. Sometimes they have steps, not just ladders, in them, especially on some of the bigger ships. Uh, almost stairs to um, come up, not just in the center of the ship, but at either end, and have those bits be behind doors. They come up, so you come up and there are defended positions. So instead of the crew coming up to a position which can be held and you can fire down, you have a position they can withdraw, the crew on deck can withdraw to, to hold while reinforcements come up. Um, but it's, and preferably behind, preferably hold and behind positions which can have small cannon load with grape shot that can basically turn that deck into a kill zone. <sighs> Take care, Peter Dawson. Nice one. Wait, can't you splash even pop guns that put out a flag to say bangs? Uh, no. Nice one. From what I understand, the USA is trying to do is because China is expanding its influence in South America. China is expanding its influence in South America, but it's probably not going to do it as much as. Let's put it this way. Here is the real problem. And. Um, this is what America forgets about China and South America. Prior to World War II, if you were going to pick which nation that you thought many of the South American nations would support in a war, you would have said probably Germany in the European war, because the Germany has big populations out there and big factions and big commercial interests and lots of support. However, and this is where the problem comes in for that, in World War II, what rolls around? Those countries go neutral quickly and stay neutral until they eventually are pushed by America into joining the war. Why? One, America in pushes neutrality. Two, the fact is the German Navy couldn't get to them. They couldn't get any support to them. So those nations would have found themselves on their own facing the full might of Britain. Or rather, whatever might the British chose to send if they decided to get involved. And that would have probably been more powerful than whatever they could put together. And this is because mainly the big ones in the big power in South America is and always will be Brazil. And if Brazil doesn't want to get involved, it ain't going to happen. So, America is going to worry about Argentina. They are. There are going to be some people who want to bend over backwards to support Argentina, worrying about it. The same as they did during the Cold War when they worry about the Soviet Union getting involved in Argentina. And the lesson from that was you gave them equipment, they then invaded the Falkland Islands. It cost British blood and British, uh, British treasure because you were worried about them and the Soviet Union. Sorry, it ain't going to happen this time. So if you want to supply them weapons, that's fine, but you have to supply them with weapons which have no British components on them. That's fine. That That's easy enough to do, surely. Surely America can do that, can supply weapons. Because the only weapons Britain has a veto over are the same weapons which Britain can't sell to people because America has a veto over them. Because America supplies components. On a previous stream, someone asked how big a diameter torpedo one could build. So I designed a massive nuclear strategic torpedo, the TF-15, a one and a half meter diameter, 24 meter long yield of a two Tsar bombs. These are designed to be launched from modified November class SSN. Admiral Kuznetsov shot it down, thank God Lord. But honestly, that sounds like a method to wipe out cities with a tidal wave. Thank you, Night Hound Productions. Uh, the British Cruisers book is one of three ones I don't have, but likely yes, it is a good one. That's true. If Cromwell had been first sealed, then the Anglo-Dutch Wars would have gone very differently. Uh, the Anglo-Dutch Wars would have been very short, sharp, and painful for the Dutch. Cromwell's nothing if not a doughty organiser and a very able administrator.
I remember that Dr. Clark, you may have said this to me, this, but to me, the UK doesn't want RGG to update its equipment because it would have to invest in Falcons Defense. Britain does invest in Falcons Defense. We do like to, but we like to have a small high tech force down there, which is capable of dealing with the dealing with the level of RGG as it is currently. With a enough of a tech superiority, hopefully it wouldn't lose too many or lose any in defending the islands. Um, you change that balance, you're going to make it in a, a, a far more expensive and require far more people. I've I think I'll leave that for bilge pumps because I know what questions we're going to be asking in bilge pumps this week because I'm writing them. Mm. Dr. Clark, if you can, if you self-publish, can you please make a version of Nook? Um, my plan is to try and get the, some software which allows me to put them out to every single one. Sometimes, as it's just about 8.30, I must ask, when was the last time you see you've eaten? Your eyes keep getting heavy. I know you need more than nine brewers, a blessing or statement. Or I have eaten today. I've had lots of things but i have been uh, let's put it this way last night my bed companion I, I i will admit this and for the last few nights my bed companion has been a poodle who sleeps on top of the bed mainly because the plate the place we were staying in he decided was haunted and didn't like and when i say he decided was haunted um so did everyone else so the girls and the corgi ended up pretty much in one room and yeah i was sort of going why don't we just go home no 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 anyway um there is one thing that i would like to say about a poodle you can be in a double bed right and he will be of course right next to you and he considers the whole bed his he likes to chase things in his sleep he likes to stretch and then when he decides he wants to go out in the middle of the night because he needs to do his business, which is fine, he wakes you up by standing up, walking up to the head of the bed, and staring at you from about here. Until you wake up, because you can feel his breath on your face. And you're going, hello, fluffy research or something. You want to go walkies? So, yeah, um... Uh, I would recommend the Hilton next day. It's a really nice. They're really nice staff. They're really nice people, and they're happy to take dogs. And they are far more accommodating than our usual hotel the next day was, uh, was when I was trying to deal with the issues for my mom and sister. So we were uh, transferred to Hilton, which was really nice. It is just about 29 here. I, I will probably not be going on for too long today because I have been up for quite a while and not had much sleep and I really fancy getting to my bed. Uh, Come on, Reborn Cruiser. How's Type 83 proposal standing? Me and Drak are going to be talking about that this week. Uh, friends, uh, again, the 20,000 ton Baymaster, that's definitely a bilge response question. Reverend Dr. Clark, thinking about sna uh, snapping ship's keel to the torpedoes, how big a void do you have to create on the ship to snap the keel? And how do you need to maintain it? Um... Probably a couple. Uh, so let's see. Basically, it depends. If I'm creating... This is going to sound fun. Uh, okay. You have to make the hole big enough that the ship's keel is unsupported, but not so big that the ship itself just drops into it and finds a new level. Uh, because that can lead to swamping and the ship coming up and it can be all sorts of ways about. But it's fun. Oh, uh, pretty much it needs to be about 30% of the length of the keel. Reverend, are you in the Griffin book? Griffin book? Uh, 
clarify, please? Mm hmm. Ron Cash, can you think of any better way to get do gun portals on the Aegis airship? So many stories of water flooding in from the gun ports and a few um, too many capsizings. Not really. In that age, there's a limitation as to what you can do. Cameron, the author of The Martian self published, as does Glenn Stewart. Hmm. Uh, Derek Scott, is this the keel snap by downwards motion caused by the void, or the upwards motion caused by... It's both combined with the fact that the hull is designed, and of course weight distributed in the ship is designed to have water pressure all around it. So with the loss of the water pressure, the hull, all the weight's on the keel, and it's got no support, and it's, so it's supposed to go kunk. <laughs> it might not let water in, but it will seriously disrupt the operations and break everything. That's good. They're not worried about Argentina, but China building an airbase. No, Britain's not worried about that. And honestly, if China wants to get involved with the Hawklands, they're going to have problems there. It's a case of the British don't trust... Let, let's put this way. If China's build, building base around the world, that's lovely, but how can they support them? How will they support them? People have this same question for the British in... Any war. Again, the British would have these base around the world. How are you going to support them? Well, the whole reason was you had a massive fleet which pretty much existed for two things to keep trade flowing and to fight, fight for control of the sea. And that's how you supported those bases abroad, which allowed you to do, use the fleet for those two things of keeping the trade flowing, etc. The Chinese would have to recreate that. And if they get a base in Argentina, that's going to be more of a problem for them than anything else. Let's put it this way. Let's see what happens first before we start reacting. And I think you have... To, they're not going to push the British into doing this. Okay, you might bamboozle all the trust and the government, the current government, because they're pretty new when it comes to this sort of form of foreign policy. But I doubt they're going to they're going to give in on this one. Because until the British see an actual Chinese carrier battle group being based out of Argentina... They're not going to worry too much about the Chinese and all this thing. That's right. Chinese weapons are no British parts. That's fine. Let Argentina buy Chinese weapons. But just remember, if Argentina buys Chinese weapons and starts buying into the whole Chinese system, then they're going to be facing real trouble on various other problems. Because Argentina has to sell their stuff places. Uh, look at who Argentina sells to. Look at who they buy stuff from. This is a trouble. Yeah, there is there is constant talk about you know building up a dual economy, etc. Especially between Russia and, and China. The more nations you include in that, the stronger it gets. But also the more those nations have to decide what they get access to. And for Argentina and any country in South America, mm, cutting yourself off from America is going to be economically interesting, politically interesting. And remember also, America, if you're pushing that far, America has a lot of levers to play in your countries. Nastingly enough. Um, I usually prefer a hard book, uh, you know, a nice physical book I can feel in my hands for history books, and especially uh, for most of my fiction reading, it's Kindle, because that's what I have. And I honestly have reached the point where there's so many books there, I do not want to transfer them over to something else. People go, oh, this is better. And I go, yes, I have tens of thousands of books. I am not transferring them. And they look at me and go, how can you have that many? Google going, 
We want to supply your books now. No, you can't. You'll make me buy them all again. Do you know how much money that would cost? You know, I realize how much of a book I, uh, an addict I am to reading. <laughs> you need to see the DC League of Super Pets. I really um, don't because I'm worried it'll give my fluff, so your fluffy research assistants ideas. Uh, Paul Bessler, do you think Q&A's a class carry will visit the Focal Zone anytime soon? I think they are going to be going down there soon. I did like very much like this week's Biltrons. Thank you. I said, why would the IJN have purpose built target ships? The I attractee in the Ahama class target ship? Because it's useful for training. Because honestly, it is useful to have special ships. And because then those are hulls which are built to certain naval standards, which can be used for other things if you adapt in wartime. I did very much like this. I agree with 75 and 76 mm it'll be very much better as you can do more besides the shell. Yep. I like the 76 mm oh, Sorry, the Griffin book is was put out by Secret Dog Legends and I helped casinos catch card counters and cheats. Yeah, I'm not a card counter or a cheat. That's the thing. But I do teach on occasion psychological warfare. And I do sometimes practice it when playing cards. Which means I don't count cards. Um, basically, I was playing the man long before Har Harvey Specter was playing the man rather than the game. Or the cards. And I've been doing that for a long time. I don't care about the cards. The cards in poker are almost secondary. What kind of hand you actually have really doesn't matter. If you want to really scare people, you play the game without ever looking at your cards. You can really freak someone out that way. You never, ever actually look at your cards. They're just there on the table. You never pick them up. You never touch them. You're just, you're just watching them all and just going, raise, fall. And they're just going, check your cards. Check your cards. Check your cards. Check. And it really can psych some people out. If you if you at a table where they are like that, they'll start off by all raising because they'll think uh -huh, you're just going to lose your money. And by about the time it's the fourth way round, they start buckling. And um, yeah. I have won an entire game with a five and a four as my first two cards. Thanks to that. <clears throat> Because everyone ended up folding. <laughs> so we know the RN is starting to take the plan serious when they start mass building SSKs and FAs. Uh, the interesting thing is the British are building UL, uh, UL, uh, uh, um, uh, long-range UVs under sea, un uh, underwater uncrewed vehicles and um, XL UVs. 
I have a feeling before long, if the, the, the Chinese started building up, you'd get some of those based down there. It would be a nice thing to uh, put in and uh, put down there to protect them. Uh, protect them. Do you enjoy audiobooks as well as Kindle ones? Occasionally, I do some audiobooks. I'm getting more into that because I have a friend who's really, really into them. Um, but sometimes I don't like the voices. They're not the voices I hear in my head when I'm reading the book, so I don't get. I don't like them. Actually, right, quick question. If you were ordered to build a flight batch two of the Hawkins class cruisers, what changes would you ma would you ha make? Um what changes would I make? Flight two of the Hawkins class. Well I go back to the drawing board, I take out the designs of the nine point two inch guns. I'd, call, I'd erase their name right in Hawkins Batch 2 and build. The ones which had twin 9.2 inch guns. Um, eight, uh, four turrets. I think six inch, seven inch, six inches of belt armor, speed 34 knots from memory. Yeah. Um, three inches of deck armor over the vital spaces, one and a half inches elsewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm building. <laughs> and I'm calling them Hawkins Batch 2. You need to go look at a movie called Maverick starring Mel Gibson and James Garner. He says I haven't looked at that one. Me and James Garner go back way far in terms of looking at, each other, looking at movies. Take care, Argy. <laughs> Any comments on those new Japanese watches for Mr. Defense? Uh, Bilge Pumps is probably going to be talking about it again. I just wonder, who's the best voices for fantasy books? Um... It's gonna sound slightly weird, but I can't remember this. Um... Oh, good lord. I cannot remember off the top of my head, but. Um... Oh, who is she? she do she's actually read some of the. Um... Some of the 40k books, and she does them really well. Oh, I cannot remember her name. But no, there is a there is a surprisingly, f how to put it, not super famous, but not unfamous actress who has done some of the forty k books. I think from memory, who uh, actually does the voices pretty damn well. It's always interesting when you get actually professional actors and actresses doing it. Hmm. Uh, the XL UAV program is an interesting one. Um, it's in proto testing, but it's in the sort of testing where they are. How do I put this politely? The British are motoring along, building copies, moving on, building more copies, building on, moving on. Building. It's sort of at a level of which of. We're learning all we can learn before we have to do actually a serious construction. So we're going to keep them in production and production and production. And then the moment we actually look like things are getting issuey, we'll build a batch. And we'll have the facilities to rapidly build a batch. Or two. <laughs> what is the difference between a batch and a flight? Nothing, really. It's just the American... 
expression is flight and usually is slightly bigger. And the British expression is batch. In bigger in terms of numbers. I don't know. In fact, I don't know if I'm going to spell the French fight bomb because. Uh, uh, in which had Hood, Riccolo, Adri, Le Hardy, Le Droit, Le Ferron, Cask against Bismarck, and still still some are still Hood blowing up. Um, I don't think it'd be quite the same, but I think okay, we'll be talking about it because honestly, I'm pretty sure now. Oh, two. Uh, I'm pretty sure that answer was not in line with the spirit of my question. Yeah, you are. No, no, no. It is in the spirit of question. If you were ordered to build a flight or batch two of the Hawkins class, what would you? What changes would you make? I told you what changes I'd make. I'd go back to the original design study, which produced the Hawkins class, and go, we selected the wrong ship. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you never said at what point I had to get the changes from. I'm going back to the design study and going to the other back of uh, being being considered in it. Oh. You have to be very specific. <laughs> oh. Ron Cash, can you think of any more dangerous turns in front of the enemy guns than that formed by the 5th Battle Squadron of Chitland? Um, mm. Mm. Let's put it this way. In terms of battle squadrons, probably not. In terms of units, there are a fair number of battles I can think of where destroyers did some pretty scary turns and maneuvers. Vectors. Oh, I miss a heavy cruiser, what if? Yes. Don't worry, it was on the Hawkins class. Thomas, can the different matches have the same government with ordering different matches, like four by Labour, four by Conservative government? Not usually, but they they because if you are ordering a new batch under a new government, uh, they will probably incorporate changes because in the moment you're ordering a new batch, you're writing up a new contract for those ships, so you might well include changes. And always willing, usually as a rule, include changes. So, I'm, I'm not talking about the one we were talking about before, but apparently, a new program looking at new fast patrol craft for the channel, Irish Sea, etc., could be sent to uh, sent and could be sent to the Strait of. Uh, the Straits of Hamuz. Eh, it's interesting, but it, it's interesting to see what they're suggesting. Honestly, I think any fast patrol craft program at the moment is actually code for, we're actually designing this for Ukraine, but we want to subsidize it as much as possible so that they have a design ready to go because they need it more than we do. And Poland to an extent, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, just curious, is, you, is your take on the current projections of folks like Peter Zellin, Zine? Um... You'd have to clarify which of his projections. And there are some interesting projections going around to people. I mind. It's like the US Navy, and this is going to definitely come up in Donald Trump's this week. US Navy keeps talking about, we want to build smaller warships. Okay, that's fine. Do you want to do less with them? No, we want them to do more tasks. Okay. We want them to have this, 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 and this. All these capabilities. And want them to carry this, 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 this. Hi, DHA and And you sit there and go, well, here's your problem. The size of ship is not dictated by your dreams and wishes. The size of ship you build is dictated by what you want to do with it. So if you are wanting a ship to all this and you have to include all the equipment required to do all that, it is not going to be smaller. And if you want fewer large surface combatants, because you're going to have more smaller ones, that's great. But if you're still expecting larger ones to do all these tasks, 
then you're probably they're going to grow even bigger because they're going to need to they're going to need to come home less to refuel because you're going to need them on station for longer. And yeah, that 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 gets interesting. It does get fun. This one, when reading a choose your own adventure, remember to keep one finger always on the sign page so you can restart if unimpressed. Oh, yes. Nice one. If the British have Rickaloo, why send Hood at all? When you can send Rickaloo? Uh, probably because you're sending Hood and Prince of Wales. Because if you got Rickaloo, you would send. Uh, you would say, nice way, the British would be sending as much firepower as they could. So it actually, you might end up with three task groups out there. You might end up King George V and Victorious, and that might have Rickley with it. Um, so that could be a task group, or that might have had another ship with it. Basically, if you have the French fleet view, you have all sorts of things have changed. And also that's changed because if you've got the French force with you, then more than likely they're providing some of Force A, uh, Force H, operating out of Gibraltar. So, if they're providing Force H operating out of Gibraltar, you could well have Ark Royal and those commitments not having to be made, which means you've not had those wear downs. Which means Hood might have actually gone in for a refit earlier. Which means that there's all sorts of. It gets very interesting very quickly. Okay, it gets very interesting very quickly. Some of the knock-ons. <laughs> This good. What did you make of the Royal Navy being replaced by a company that owns a couple of decommissioned ferries in the role of intercepting, rescuing small boats in the channel? Hallelujah for the Royal Navy. I was enjoying watching brew ships with Dr. Clark. Now a large orange cat called Fissel is watching Dr. Clark. Hello, Fissel. How are you doing? And I am watching the back of Fissel's head. Just pat Fissel. That's what Fissel wants. Fissel is telling me this through the camera. Fissel would like to be patted. So it's a little bit of stroking, especially between the ears. And the right ear especially needs some attention. The why is US Naval thinking such a shambles? The US Naval thinking isn't such a shambles, it's just they don't know what they want to be, and so they don't know what they want to do. So no what they mean when they say it is that they don't want small ships, they want to pay less for them. Probably. Um, Poland will is annoyed with the EU and Germany, but they probably won't ask for a Chinese loan because the last thing Poland wants to do is upset America because they need uh, because as strong as the Polish army is, it needs time to build up, and that time to build up is being provided by the American umbrella and the British umbrella that is provided through NATO. And, and big Chinese loans, as the Greeks would say, cause trouble with NATO.
Well, uh, well, sorry, a minus monorail focused on Russia. I meant the projectors on how sanctions hit Russia. I think, honestly, we won't be getting accurate data out of Russia to figure out what's going on there for a long time. If ever. So we're basing it all on what we are seeing from what they're not saying. I think it's kind of interesting what's happening. Let's put it this way. Russia is not reacting to the advance of, U advance of Ukraine the way I would expect it to if its economy was functioning the way they're claiming it is claiming. Thursday's live will explore a lot of things further, but probably will move beyond just Denmark Straits. Then it does need to be noted the British umbrella is, from a landfall's point of view, more of a cocktail umbrella than anything useful for keeping off rain. No, but there are these things called the V-class, Vanguard-class SSBNs, and that's part of that umbrella. And that's currently what's worrying most people when it comes to Ukraine at the moment. Hmm. Hi, Hudu. That's good. A time to build up for Poland is mainly provided by Ukraine mowing down Russians of all the heavy equipment they got from us. Mm, to an extent, yes, but I would also add that, um, yeah. Seriously, uh, uh, seriously, the Russians are having an interesting time if you're looking at their border strength and their military strength along their border. Oh gosh, are you impressed by the folks with the Royal Navy to switch the carriers around for Westland? Um, uh, uh, and do you feel the same as I do? Uh, fear, uh, same fear as I do when you see the Royal Navy facilities are scar scarily vital and irreplaceable. Uh, I think it's speaks very well them. I still wish they had a third one to muck and put in that mix. And yes, I would like to have at least another dry dock and facilities, probably in Portsmouth. If I had a choice, it w if I had a choice, they'd be in Portsmouth. They'd also have a similar dry dock facility built up in um, the Wirral, near Camel Lairds. And uh, yeah. But, you know, let's we'll see what happens. I'm impressed, actually, by Biden not saying what the consequences would be and what the things were. You see, the thing is, he didn't box himself in. He said, don't do it. And depending on what, you know, if they did do it, depending on what they do, it defines what the consequences would be. The trouble is with drawing a red line and making it too blunt is you then box yourself into a corner where you have to use something. No one wants to box themselves into a corner where they have to use nukes if they don't want, if they can see a way of not using it. Guys, speaking of um, uh, sanctions, uh, did Russia and current North Korea shipments, did Russia really get cruise missiles from North Korea? Mm, they possibly did buy some back from them to fire. Uh, care to expand on Russian economy and how they're reacting? It's getting very, very centralised. 
the Russian economy is getting very, very centralized. That can be interesting. Hello, Juno 191. Hmm. Who do? The pre trade is cool. I think I've discussed it in a video before the TNN. Ting on. I think, can't help but think that Trent's using option A at Mares, which is going to be the POD, was more if they just got the demo. Has more than what they have to just then in the next straight right. Well, let's be honest. If Merzel Kabir doesn't happen because the French due to join them, then also the cruisers which the French have, and the force the French have, sitting in the Mediterranean fleet um, are still part of the Mediterranean fleet. Which means you have extra forces for other things uh, down there. So all sorts of things happen. All sorts of things. And you might well have the case that French North Africa, and this scenario is what I'm going to go with, basically. French North, uh, for the French choose to go to North Africa and continue to fight from North Africa. So... That means you still have French North Africa attacking the Italian. If the oh, because the Italians have of course attacked France, French North Africa starts attacking the Italians from behind, and so you have the Italians in North Africa having to fight from having being attacked from both sides, which probably means the Italians don't have the time that they end up having to actually save the situation in North Africa when they start to collapse. In which case the Italians might well lose North Africa before the Germans can really get involved out there, so you know, Africa Corps, which changes the whole nature of the war and has all sorts of consequences. Also, that can change the outcome with Crete, and that can change the outcome with this. And if you're not fighting a big war in North Africa, then suddenly... You, some of the operations you have to do become very, very different. And also resupplying Malta becomes a doodle because what you're doing is basically you build a way of getting, so you get to take the supplies along the North African coast and then you pulse them across to Gibraltar, to Malta. You don't have to do those massive convoy actions. And that it, it really has an impact on what the Royal Navy can do and can't do and is doing. And probably changes the Royal Navy concentration in that war from resupplying Malta and keeping convoys and keeping North Africa supported so the Italian Navy really can't get involved there to sink the Italian Navy so the Mediterranean becomes a neutral, if not uh, basically an anti-air, anti-submarine campaign for any naval movements through there. And then you basically have the Royal Navy divided into two, an East and the French Navy, an Eastern deterrent force based probably in the ocean so it can pulse into the Mediterranean from that end if it needs to, if the Italians do something which requires a fleet. So the, 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 you can come on there, you base the fleet in the, in the ocean and the North Atlantic to deal with the Germans. But it's going to be interesting to get into it. Sometimes, if they used firmer barrack weapons, then there's probably there's a difference between if the Russians use nuclear weapons and if they use firmer barrack weapons. Remember, nuclear weapons they will create radiation, and that radiation will go places. We've again, this is more a discussion for bilge pumps than for here. But if you use a nuclear weapon, that's going to leave fallout, and that's going to have radiation clouds, and those clouds are going to go places. So. That's the problem. Um, if Russia uses nuclear weapons on Ukraine and the winds blow those radiation clouds over Poland, that becomes an issue. So there is a big difference between using thermobaric weapons and using nuclear weapons. I can see Russia getting away with using thermobaric weapons without anyone really complaining other than giving the Ukrainians a lot of weapons. Using nukes, that's a different matter. That pushes Russia into not only the rogue state, but the threat rogue state status. 
And that might even force China, because there's a recent interesting statement about the Chinese, you know, questions China had over it, that might well cause problems with the Chinese, Russia, the Russian Chinese relationship, which would be terrible for Russia at this point. Looks like this came at Columbia crew that carry is a discussion. The current US Columbia is an LA class of sin, but by the time the SSBN is commissioned, the SSN may be retired. It's getting a long tooth. It could be interesting, let's say. We'll see what happens. Currently, it's listed as District of Columbia, probably. I heard the French were afraid the French and Germans were going to stuff, were going to blow stuff to the ground the French fought on. Uh, there's all sorts of issues, but the nicest way, the, pre the premise of the question is the French do continue fighting on, so in the nicest way, I I have to concern myself with what I can do. I can't go, eh. and also, I, I, I think there's a few things overstate on that one. After all, look at how many times the Germans tried to bomb the Houses of Parliament, the House of Commons, House, uh, House, Com House of Parliament in the UK, how many times they tried to bomb all sorts of things in the UK and missed. Um, yeah. Remember, whenever I think of battle cruisers, I think of the RN. Did anyone else have a building use them? Yeah. Uh, we had battle cruisers built by the Japanese Congo class, original battle class cruisers, and of course the Germans. And mm, yeah, that's pretty much the three nations which really have battle cruisers. The Russians start off constructing some, the Americans start constructing some. Uh, lots of navies look into constructing them, but only three actually have them in the service. Take care, see you, McDavid. I enjoyed a pizza. Ron Cash, are there some sort of defences at Portsmouth uh, Ross against air attack? Mm. What an interesting question. Let's just hope the prevailing winds in Ukraine can just keep blowing north and east, which is another reason not to use nukes if you're Russia. And yes, there are, of course, some Commonwealth countries, Australia, etc. Australia, actually, is there anyone? HMS Sydney, HMS Australia. And New Zealand gets, well, buys one for the Royal Navy. But, um, yeah. They're mainly, but they're basically good. At that time, they're as good as being British. <sighs> so, right, if the Fran uh, Italians had a force advancing on their near area from France, uh, from French, then Churchill probably wouldn't have had to me uh, mess up O'Connor's plan, and then you have the whole WDF going to Greece, potentially. Also, additional troops mean that you need to probably not be reassigned, and if Connor has three divisions, he just wins super hard. Mm-hmm. And a Dutch were looking at battle cruise as well. It's fun. It's fun times. <laughs> I 
There was an honest undone about the radiation risk, but I think they'd risk it if technically it was a low yield. Um, yeah. No, I don't think they would. I think there is... It, does, it doesn't... It's one of those things. It doesn't matter the... Okay, yes, you might have to drop four firm barracks or use a firm backer of barrack rocket system instead uh, to launch us, and they've already done that at various points in this campaign, it looks like. Uh, but I'm already using them. Whereas if you use nukes, you are using nukes. It doesn't matter whether it's a small nuke, big nuke, focus nuke, electromagnetic pulse nuke, doesn't matter what it is, it's still a nuke, and it's going to have that connotation. It's kind of, nicest way, imagine the socio-cultural reaction of, and the political, cult, uh, political reaction that would fall out from that, of the various populations of the Western nations involved in NATO, if Russia uses nuclear weapons. It does, it's kind of like you're talking about the same people who refer to HMS Belfast as a battleship. These people will be reporting on the nukes. It doesn't matter. It would be the nu a nuke was being used. Right, so let's see. Where were you when you learned about the Queen? Do you actually know any of the guards? Um, on last question, I have lots of friends in various branches of the British forces. Because of where I went to school, because of where I've taught, because of where I've worked, because of what I'm interested in. So yes, I'm not quite sure how many of the people I know around that area, but I know a few of them. Uh, where was I when I learned about the Queen? I was in Cornwall. And when I heard it came over a radio, which I was playing on my phone at the time, I was under the hood of a car, checking the oil and checking the brake fluids and all those things. Just checking the uh, checking the levels because, uh, yeah, <laughs> one of my uh, one of my family members bought a car, and I was going, "Did you check these things before you bought it?" No, it should be fine. Did you buy it from a dealer? No, I bought it from a really nice, a really nice lady. Did she check them? Well, it's been MOT. It's got six months left on its MOT in service, so it was last checked six months ago. Okay, fine. I'm going to check it for you now. Why? Because I'm paranoid and I'm old and you, and because that's what people who are older cousins slash pretty much siblings do. So, enjoy. And I'm going to show you how to check them while I'm here, because it's your first car and you need to learn these things. And no one else is going to teach you, because unfortunately the person who would have taught her is no longer with us. So, yeah. And for reductions. Um, that's luck. Uh, this is not How do you go about improving Iron's export orders in post war? How much is it the case of not stellar war experience, Australian Southeast Asia World War II, and in flexible design? It's more, I know politics is mostly politics. It is mostly politics. Okay, right, interesting question being a euphemism for need to know basis, Dr. Singh. Um, uh, it's an interesting question. So, yeah, so Alaska's were large heavy cruisers. Alaska's were what heavy cruisers should have been by World War Two in terms of size and the skill and capabilities. <sighs> I 
I've heard that Dot's Clot. Some lines are British Dominion, but they are making security arrangements with China. How does that work? Can the Crown do anything about it? They are not a Dominion. They are a member of the Commonwealth. And they share the Queen as head of... Well, the King now as head of state. But... I think from memory. But... Answer is no. We know they're not. They're not a British overseas territory. If they're a British overseas territory, then we have control of their foreign policy. In return for we guarantee their security and their defence. So that's why we have control of their foreign policy. We guarantee their security. That's the deal. Uh, but mm. Marv is not a thermobaric weapon. Marv are all bombs, isn't it? That's the American one, isn't it? Not thermobaric. No. Mother of all bombs is just a very, very big regular bomb. It's basically a tall boy on steroids. Uh, we can't do anything about it. But there again, if I was the Solomon Islands, they're trying to play the two sides off against each other. I'm not sure how well they're going to do it. They don't seem to be doing it that well. Oh my gosh, just bought a car myself, Dr. Locke. Hmm? Ron Cash was doing the same checks. <laughs> oh, sorry. How many people are alive in the UK who were born before Elizabeth took power? A lot, a fair number, because of the, uh, the, you know, the age people, most people in the UK live to. But when they were alive, they were very, very young. So the more interesting question is, ask many people how how many of them remember a time before Queen Elizabeth was the Queen. And that's very, very few. <laughs> yeah, th there is a reason why I went into history rather than engineering. <sighs> Basically, it was because I had the feeling that if I went into engineering, I'd be potentially fixing everything for everyone. So, at least if I went into history, I could choose what I fixed. Actually, I do enjoy the fact that the ass look like a su uh, look super like an hour oh, was that was put in the wash. Mm. Potentially. Donavarka, my dear mother once measured the oil in her car, then declared that she needed a new dipstick because it wasn't reaching oil. Yes, I know. Yeah, my mum had similar issues with her sister, my aunt, and I love my sister. She is a wonderful civil engineer, as I've said many, many times. But to this day, I, if ever she is getting cocky, and please note, she has similar things she brings up for me. This is we are siblings. This is what we do. We are oh, oh, we we do uh, we exist. Uh, this is the role of siblings. When uh, we will keep your feet on the ground, no matter what happens. I remind her that her metro one hundred uh, her me uh, her little metro, which was her first car. Which she inherited, which she got for my got given by my great aunt. Um, she drove back from uni with it and said, "It's great. It's sounding really sporty today." And I looked at her and went, "Sporty? Can we turn on the engine, sis? You've cracked. Uh, you've cracked the exhaust." No, it's just sounding sporty. No, you've cracked the exhaust. A metro is never supposed to sound... Uh, a, a Rover metro is never supposed to sound sporty. Under no circumstances is it supposed to sound sporty. <laughs> no. Ah, uh, that was fun. But she, she's a brilliant civil engineer, just no. 
car engines and her or not. But yeah. Who do Texas? How do you feel about the US Navy's response to the Turkish US of Bomber Richard? Um, I refer you to my very good friend Sal, or who watches shipping, and uh, Sal Mercurius, and all his videos on it, and the fact he's been on Build Trumps a few times to discuss Bonham Richard. We did, we did get into the full fire thing, and frankly, we all consider it the fault of the fact not having a fire ship, an actual fireboat. You need a fireboat. Uh, Benjamin, if Charles III lasts as long as his mum, I'll be in my seventies by his state funeral. Um... Potentially, but I'm not sure. Charles has always looked to me a little less well than his mum, so I don't know. But I hope he'll do well. Let's see, what might be your favourite video on Drax's channel? Um, I'm going to be egotistical now, and I'm going to say he did. He had this young naval, uh, young naval historian on, and it was them chatting about British light cruisers, I think, and that was a really good video. I think it was really fun. <laughs> no, he does lots of good videos. I enjoyed my... I, I, there isn't really a bad video on Drax. That's the thing. There isn't really a bad one. There's videos I disagree with. There are things, the topics we have arguments about and a full-on discussion and even food fights occasionally have been tempted to be break out, but we... But yeah, they're all good. Come on, guys. Come on, Dr. Clark. Sell us a mini Metro, at least. Metro 100. Uh -huh. Back in high school, doing a car placement at Canadian Tire, doing oil change to the tire swaps, Honda Civic came in from 60 kilometers away, pulled the drain plug, and not one drum of oil came out. Ouch. Pulled the oil full ever, and the membrane was burnt from excess heat to the point that the o ring was starting to melt. Ouch. Yeah, that's going to be expensive. John, if you go invited to the Central Moscow rec, uh, rec, would you go? Probably, but that's because I'm just about not enough to do it, so. JMF, yeah, my father's generation should be the ones you'd remember before the Queen, the second, uh, Queen was the second was crowned. He's in his late 80s, his 80s. Yep, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Hudo, I've recently become interested in the US Navy's reaction to incidents, accidents, failures, which seem to condition countries and Navy's historic policy of deflection regarding the same. Oh, there are so many. I'm sure this was remarkably well in the way Philip died. Yeah, my family had a sort of instinct going on that about half of us thought that that was about 18 months. We, uh, in our family history, when a, a very strong couple that really did a lot of care deeply for each other go uh when one of them goes usually the other one seems to go of 18 months two years longest one's gone afterwards is three years um Sorry, it's such a stupid announcement. Alex, how badly do you think the geopolitical experts on misunderstanding the effect of sanctions on Russia? I'll tell you my take after I hear yours. I think the experts are getting the take quite right in that they are suggesting the sanctions are doing a lot of damage. I think the trouble is the experts we're hearing from who has talking heads the most, talking a lot, are the ones who provide the contrarian opinions which drive up news revenues and 
uh, get the most circulation. I'm not always the person who thinks that necessarily the most well informed or necessarily the most accurate thinkers are the ones who get the airtime. It's the ones who produce good copy. That doesn't mean what they say is necessarily bad, but it also means that you have to take it and consider it in that vein, that the phraseology they're giving it. I think Russia is weathering it better than some people expected them to do, but I don't think it's doing as well as many as some people are saying it's doing. I think it's a far more complicated thing than they, uh, they think, because some people portray them as not being affected at all, and some people say, well, they should be completely destroyed by now. And I'm going, well, that the latter was never going to happen, and the former is twaddle. It's actually in between, and it's getting worse, but they are surviving because Russia is not exactly that small. And various other factors have helped them. But how long they'll help them is anyone's guess. And I'm probably going to finish at about 10 o'clock, so that makes it 20 minutes by my system. Uh, the Queen's going to be buried tomorrow. I said, well, funny enough, your anecdotal evidence is supported by actual evidence. 80 months seems to be the average. Yeah. <laughs> I maintain that had her father not been a heavy smoker, I think Elizabeth would have been made a very content Navy wife. But you must remember, the reason he was a smoker was because it was felt the best way to solve his speaking issues. To both calm, his t calm him and calm his throat down so he could speak as clearly as he needed to for a public speaking role. That's the whole story, really, in the King's Speech is an advertisement for cigarettes drinks, aren't it? Uh, Russia was preparing for total sanctions since 2014, at least. But as we know from media experts, Russia ran out of missiles on 25th of March. Uh, Russia's run out of a lot of things, not quite run out of missiles, etc. But the thing is, uh, Russia's expenditure of these systems has gone down quite a lot. And I think that's one of the reasons why their forces are currently suffering, because their forces are trained under the idea they're going to have overwhelming fire support and they're not getting it because they've now started to go through their supplies. And I think one of the troubles for Russia Russia is that there was a very good general at the beginning of Putin's reign in charge, uh, Putin's rule, in charge of Russia. But he was got rid of at one point because he was annoying the elites because he wasn't allowing corruption. And the new generals put in who would allow corruption in units which he didn't consider important. And the trouble is, the ones he didn't consider important were the ones you need for a long war, i.e. the maintenance and sustainment battalions, the all those sort of reserve forces, etc., that you need for a long war. So they ended up with very good, well-equipped elite troops, which they could do short, sharp actions, shock missions in. And they've done very well with that. Thank you very much. If you look at their results... But the trouble is the rest of the army is, how do I put this, full of people who are either 
very willing or at least happy to serve because they don't have many other options in some cases. However, their supplies, the sustainment, the actual numbers, all the bureaucracy is not reporting realistic figures. And you cannot do accurate planning if you don't have realistic figures. So it's just, yeah, that's their problem. What prompts did he have speaking? Um, he stuttered. A very, very bad stutter. And that was her father. That was Queen Elizabeth's father. Might as well have silence. Okay, my take is the entire bloody bunch is freaking out over lunch. We have never seen an information age economy regress to pre-information age economies. Doesn't have the demographics uh, because they don't have the people to regress to an office full of clerks for cut accounting. No, they don't have any sort of their their bureaucracy is terrible. No, sorry, so why did the Luftwaffe have such bad shots? They're not bad shots. They're very good for the type of what they're supposed to do. But the trouble is, they bombs are not accurate. Or free fall bombs are not the most accurate of weapons, especially when you're bombing at night and you're being attacked by AA fire and fighters and everything else. Rapper Delta Clark. Bill Trump says, much I like it. It's currently my fourth tier watching listening list. You and Drac put out a lot of content. I just need to eat, sleep, and work. That's just terrible. You need to sleep? <laughs> terrible. Don't worry. You can listen to me and Drac while you sleep. You can have the system on autoplay, and we can just give you our melodious tones while you try to sleep. I would say Drac's probably slightly better than that me for that, because... I have been trained as a lecturer for so many years, I automatically do the voice modulation thing. I automatically change my voice and I don't even think about it. I know, because I've had comments from people going, we really would like you to change, we'd really like you to stop doing that. And I'm sort of going, it's now such an unconscious habit, I would have to retrain myself out of it, and then that would give me problems for actually lecturing. So, yeah. That's right. I heard that the war has depleted half the global missile supply. In some types of missiles, probably more than that. Who is George? George is William's son. And Charlotte is his younger sister. So it goes Charles... Then William, then George hit William's son, then oh yeah. See, Queen is very respected by me and my mother was a great fan of her. 9-11, I was moved when the Queen ordered her band to play the American Anthem. Yeah, she was around for a lot of history. It's, it's quite interesting talking to some friends uh, who are definitely not what you would call monarchists, but they have come to the UK for the funeral because the Queen for them was a big part of the history of the last... 70 odd years and yeah it just sort of they just felt it seemed right to, to come along for it Uh, 
Oh, so, so. Uh, it took me on teachers a good bit of school to get me to write in class because I'm left-handed and no doubt they stopped the corrections because it happened to my uncle. I was only left uh, the only left-hand class I didn't have anyone else to watch and see what happened. The teacher asked me at break and I told her and she said not to worry with a big smile. It's being left-handed is fun. I'm not, but my best friend is. One of my best friends is. I'd say I have Nick Thrack. I have to remember his, uh, to call him by his t internet name. Um, Sam, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> or as I call them, CB and um, SS. By the way, SS stands for short stuff because she's titchy. Right, so I've got about 10 minutes before I uh, think I call it a night and go in and find some more food. Because I've had chicken and I've had um, cooked breakfast today, but I think I want something more before bed. And I probably need to walk fluffies. Uh, how do I text? I'm curious about certain saying. Nelson, clothes were a Frenchman, but maneuvered a Russian and healed the feet himself. Seems like a truism that's holding up. Uh, I'm not sure, quite sure if he did say that, but there could there, there could well be some naval officers who did say that at some time. I don't know. So, how many years will it take for the world to recover from this war? Decades. In, all, in terms of building up missile stocks, decades. Unless we build some more factories. And Ukraine itself is going to be a rebuilding work of decades. They're going to have to rebuild whole cities. Whole infrastructure, economy, everything's going to have to be rebuilt and rebuilt in a new way. In a way which is going to provide them with a more structural defensive depth. Because they're not going to trust their security to Russia in any way, a stretch of form. So, you consider that at the moment, Poland is going for a rebuilding project to, because a lot of their infrastructure section was re, was orientated around defending uh, against an attack from the west coming east, and moving supplies from east to west to support that. And they now have to, they now sort of rebuilding their infrastructure so they can cover both sides. And it was a semi-urgent project. Now it's a definitely an urgent project. Ukraine's going to have to do that whilst also at the same time building up their wider infrastructure so they can get more supplies and get more stuff in. And also whilst rebuilding themselves. So it's going to be decades for them. Hi, Desert Voxo. Hmm. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> I'm no kidding. I'm literally months behind. Joss, I'm not, no kidding. I'm literally months behind the drivers, but I finished both Pearl and Kentai videos. So that, there's that. That's good. Have you finished my Kentai Kassan book uh, video? The uh, the other issue is smarter weapons are making less intelligent, i.e. older computing less usable. So to see drone killing drones on the market next week, they're already on the market. They're already there. That's what Ukraine is like is going to recover quicker than Russia because the Western powers will have a political and financial interest in spending money helping them do so. Probably. We hope. We hope it's not a case of Charlie Wilson's war in Afghanistan scenario. We hope people actually step in and invest.
This also, Ukraine, let's hope Europe can pull off a Marshall, uh, Marshall plan in Ukraine when it's war. How do you think this war affects Poland and the like? Um, a lot of work is going to be done into their infrastructure. A lot of work. I don't think John Paul Jones was Russia's best admiral. There are a few Scots who were admirals in Russia, and the Russian, a few Scots who were admirals in Russia as well. Uh, I think Cochrane at one point was also there for Russia. Um, most of Europe uses standard gauge. That I'm not sure what they are. Some of them do try and call it other things, but they use what we call standard gauge. If you're talking in American or if you're talking English, you call it standard gauge. Um, that's the main gauge used in most of Europe. Uh, it's not used, of course, in Ukraine and Russia because, well, uh, Russia likes the Russian standard. Now, standard gauge itself is. Uh, four one four three five millimeters, one thousand four hundred thirty-five millimeters. Russian standard is one thousand five hundred twenty millimeters, but there is old Russian standard as well, which is uh one thousand five hundred twenty-four millimeters. Yeah. Um, if you want real fun, you can go down to the Iberian Peninsula. Which uses uh, 1,668 millimeter gauge line. Um, I forget what Ireland's on. What is Ireland on? Remind me, remind me. What's Ireland on? Right, Ireland's on a fatter line as well. Oh, what's Ireland's fat line? Ireland has a fat line. What is it? Oh, Ireland, 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 Ireland. What fat line are you on, Ireland? Look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up. Ireland. Mm-hmm. What are their railways? What are their railways? Railways, railways, railways. Irish railways. Come on, Alex. You remember this? Irish railway gauge. Uh, they use 1,600 millimeters. It's found, otherwise they're found only in Australia. Known as Irish Gauge. Yeah. Never surprised me. Wait a minute, I apologize, but I can always hold the conversation. I normally listen to English with the um, closed captioning. This American, these Americans find English English a bit quick. If Dr. Clark uh, asks me a question, I need assistance. 
No worries, you can always ask me to say it again. Sorry, I do speak quite quickly. Only boy and 40 cousins. You speak fast, you don't get heard. Even if you speak fast, you don't always get heard. Have you read the Moscow Report yet? I did while I was on holiday, but I have to admit, I also read some other more interesting things as well while on holiday. And was trying to read a lot of stuff on Flair Class Corvettes. Oh, you re Ukrainian infrastructure. The railway station allows wide gauge Soviet cargo train from Ukraine to European sun gauges in Hungary and an old Warsaw Pact and is part of the Belt and Road. Ouch. Fun times. I think that's more because it's not the st the gauge of the track that's the, th the thing, it's the weight the track can take and the speeds the tracks can take. Um... And the way we were designed our um, platforms, because we hadn't really defended the Penix. In nicest way, railway infrastructure and getting money to invest in it has been a long, long time coming. And the reason why the high-speed rail that's being built up the central country needs to be built is mostly because the sheer amount of work needs to be done on the other main lines to actually get them up to anything like approaching a modern standard means they're going to have to be shut down. And if you don't have the spare capacity in the network, i.e. another line, you cannot shut those lines down without grinding the entire network to a halt. And now it's 10 o'clock, and I should go get some, at least some cake. The <sighs> boxer, given the information that came out of Single Moscow, what lesson can the modern Navy take from a sinking? Uh, don't take a ship which hasn't been upgraded, hasn't been properly trained, hasn't been properly modernized and hasn't been properly equipped into a war zone. Also, don't presume your enemy can't reach you. Oh, and don't overwork your that crew when they are trying to make that thing or make it work. Rose, do you have anything in the pipeline for South American cruisers? I have done some South American cruisers, but there might be more coming up later. Hello, Roxford. Hello to you and mods in chat. I'm like the guy who showed up two or three lectures that got drunk on the room, but are assuming you guys are still nailing it. Uh, uh, but reassuring you guys are still nailing it. Hello. Don't worry, I have many students like that. And I ask you to finish up that. Yes, yeah. Hello. Brunel wanted seven foot railway gauge. That would have changed the transport in Europe. Yeah, it would have changed it massively. Um, next year is probably going to be technology, but could well be also some random forgotten battles as well. Who do? My cousin's one step removed, so we are the 19th cousin of the Queen four times removed, which I think means absolutely nothing. It's still fun to be. But I'll be announcing the what next year's thing is going to be in December, like I did last year with announcing the year of the cruiser. So I'm still sort of confirming it.
Alright, I know seeing the chat get out of hand makes me wonder what the mods are doing. Uh, mostly hitting the stuff. Trust me, I see the stuff that they whack before other people do. Trust me, they're working hard. Stafford and Dan are and Sean. And I think I think all four have been on at certain points this evening. And Brock um, have been really working hard and going, "Hello, you really want to mess with us?" That's good. You forgot not probably maintain no. Learning, impression, loading gauge in the UK is an issue of height and width for the local areas, coaches and wagons. Your bridges and tunnels are an issue that constrains loading gauge. Yeah, it's there's all sorts of things which are, it's not the track which is the problem. The track is still the gauge. It's the amount we can load on it and the the things we can use because of the infrastructure that we design it with. I see. Don't have damage control equipment locked up with only a single person board having the key to access it. Oh, that would also be an issue. <laughs> Thank you, Paul Lamas. Thank you, everyone. As said, I it's now ten o'clock, so I am gonna go off. The brew hut looks autumn. Thank you, Rook, uh, Rook, Rooksford. I'm glad it does. It's always reminding me I need to insert ads. I do find it funny. I never do. <laughs> yeah, make sure that's on live chat. Because <sighs> otherwise it goes weird on me. Time to quote the space force? <laughs> always. Uh, were you reading anything under flag class Corvettes and a man on sand? Probably, but um, hopefully you'll re uh, you'll uh, hopefully you'll be reading in something I've written that everyone will be understand when I've finished. <laughs> Thank you, Stafford. Vision BAA rail in Canada brought British coaches. Look like amusement park coaches next to North American passenger cars and like mine was. Huh. Lions, how much of an impact would it be if Ukraine switched over to European rail gauge instead of Russian standard? It would make their infrastructure and connections a lot easier. And honestly, if you built it right, you could probably have trains running directly from London, probably from, uh, from St. Pancras, all the way to Kiev. And you just know the British government would want to set that train up. They would be subsidizing that line. So that it would be literally, you can jump on the train in Kiev, you can jump on the train in St. Pancras, and you next get off it in Kiev. <laughs> and it runs high speed the whole way. <laughs> Going back to the 19th century, would the 68 pounder muzzle loaders on HMS Warrior be able to penetrate her own armor? If not, what period gun would you want to use? Uh, yeah, close enough range. If you kept hitting her, yes, you could penetrate it. Would it penetrate it first round? No, but second, third round, probably. <laughs> Alex, would you consider video covering the loss of military cable shipyards due to technology change since the uh, age of ship uh, Iron Age of shipbuilding started? Um, I've already done some videos on that. That's the trouble. It's the trouble is with the technology one, the air technology, and the one thing that I'm is. Stopping me going directly to definitely confirming it is because the fact that I've already dabbled in quite a bit of technology already and I continue to dabble in it, so it's a case of, yeah, do I want to? Is it sensible? Thank you, Alzaski. Thank you, Melanie640. Um, Stop being cruel to my admins. They work very hard, Melanie. <laughs> oh. Night six zero from was three hundred Type C and two hundred Type D escort ships unrealistic for the IGN? Yes, but it's nice to have a dream. It's always good to have a dream. A dream. 
No, no, it's Stafford. Uh, Who the Texas? The reason I brought up the Nelson saying is that it seems Russia is trying very hard to lose this war on all axes. Um, they're trying very hard to win it. It's just they keep getting an option and make, picking the wrong one. No worries. Um, as I said, always happy to answer questions. There's also that's the reason why I have the server. So if people do want to ask and engage in a longer run conversation can do that in the Discord server quite easily. There's also, I do tend to answer questions, and I do do comment response videos uh, when people do enough comments on a video, and I go, mm, I should probably do a comment response video on that. It's so like, on Friday's video, will probably be a comment response video to 19th Century Cruisers, and I'll probably record that on Tuesday. <laughs> Most sort of cruel? I'm just describing their typical workload, aren't they? They work very hard, Melanie. Stafford, I wouldn't use that phrase in Melanie. She'll take you. If anyone... Oh, the audio's glitching. Ah, lovely. Fun times. All right, take care, everyone. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth, si smooth streaming. I do not know why. Everything is working fine. Ah, well. Not that one. That one.